Hello, welcome back. Uh, Circling Sales Sports Podcast. It's been a while. I know. I deeply apologize. Uh, I've had a lot going on. I got work. I got school. Coming towards the end of the quarter. Uh, but I've got something here that might make up for it. Uh, it's a little exciting. At least for me, it was. Uh, I got to interview UW legend, O'Day legend, current Miami Dolphins running back, Miles Gaskin. Uh, it's a little bit long. It's going to be like around an hour. Uh, I'm going to be working on editing out some of the parts out right now. Audio might be choppy at points just because, you know, it was over the phone. He's in Florida right now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, thank you for everybody who listens here. Uh, I know it's been a little bit while, been a couple of weeks since I uh, I put another one out, I put another episode out that should be changing. It should be good uh, to go to next week. Uh, even though Comic Con's coming up, I should be good on Wednesday to have that out. Uh, thank you again for everybody who listens. I know it's been a couple of weeks for so everybody who comes out. I do appreciate um, and enjoy the interview. Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, circling Seattle Sports Podcast. Today I have a UW and an O'Day legend here with me, Miles Gaskin, current my, uh, Miami Dolphins running back, finished uh, as the UW career rushing yards and total touchdowns and rushing touchdowns leader, I think it was. I don't. I, th- I think that's what the website said. Uh, <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on, man. appreciate it. Uh, so I'm just going to get to it. Uh, I'm going to start off with O'Day. Uh, mm-hmm. So what – was your experience like experience like as a whole at O'Day, you know, you know, and what has O'Day helped you with, would you say, you know, in life, like on the field or, you know, in sports? And do you have some some like best memories you'd like to share? Ooh, that's a, that's that's three really good questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm keep... I don't mean to st- stack them all up on you there, but no, hit me with the first one. Do you want me to I'm, 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 uh, hit me with the first one again? What was your experience like as a whole at at O'Day? Just you know, going uh, all four years, you know, your like your memory of it and how you felt going yeah. out. Um, first, uh, first thing I think all the time when people tell me like, "Oh, what was O'Day like? Best time of my life." Like, <laughs> I can't make it up. I really can't. Yeah. Um, if you go to O'Day, if you went to O'Day during the times I went to O'Day, I don't. Uh, you gonna say the same thing. Like teachers took care of us. Teachers pushed us. I'm oh, not gonna yeah. say take care of us, but they pushed us. Made sure that we was taking care of business on and off the field. I mean, sometimes teachers got on our heads about it. So oh, yeah. it, it oh, definitely yeah. pushed us as, as young men to grow up and uh, just just that part was huge. And then just having the brotherhood of it. Um, past sports, just being around your best friends all day, every day. And oh it's yeah, just y'all. It, it, it's it's something it's something that can't be replaced. Because I definitely I get people you know who ask me because they'll see I'm I I always I have uh, two of the wristbands on I wear those every day, or even mm-hmm. when I go to like I wear my own day stuff you know, they're like oh what was it like you know I even have people who ask me because they want their you know their <laughs> friends to go you know what I mean yeah. and I tell them the same thing, I mean I know yeah, I'm only exactly. like a year removed you know what I mean yeah. but. Uh-huh. That's how it's, I. It's, it's, it's not made up. Yeah, no. Oh no. Yeah. Speak the same language. That's what I'm saying. So like, so people that haven't gone and people want to know, I, I, I'll sit down and sit and talk to anybody and argue that. Okay, <laughs> that's <not> the state. <laughs> oh yeah, no, because I had people who went to public school. You know, a bunch of my friends went to public school, and they were like, "Oh man, you like going to an all boys school?" It's like I'm with my friends all day. You know what I mean? Like. I was gonna say you ain't gotta worry about looking good. Yeah, you ain't gotta yeah. worry about if you you know what I'm saying, you ain't gotta worry about no girl talking about who he cute, you talk about girl talking about who he ugly. <laughs> you ain't gotta worry about then how to be so yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely yeah. stripes. You know, your stripes as a as a freshman you get you know what I'm saying, you learn you learn the game and O'Day I think <laughs> is a great place for everybody. Um just to grow up with, because when you come in all day, you just wide-eyed freshman. Nobody can really give you the best. You know what I'm saying? Nobody can explain to you. Okay? Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah. when you're a freshman, it's just like, hey, just, just stick to it. You kind of just got to experience you know, it. Yeah. Yeah, you oh, yeah. You have dudes that you meet that's going to be in your weddings, going to be sitting next to you on graduation from college, all that type of stuff. You're going to have the best friends. Oh, yeah. Um. Are there things that you learned while you were at O'Day, like lessons you took with you that, you know, 
you would say are still relevant to you today? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'd speak just from a just from an education standpoint. Uh, mm-hmm. Miss Pop. Oh she, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She 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 pushed me and uh, believed in me. I I had a hard time in the classroom, probably because I was playing around too much. But <laughs> as we was talking about, but she she made me buckle down and she helped me get to where I am or where yeah where I am today. She helped me yeah be able to have the grades for UW. Um, the SAT was kicking my butt, and she used to sit down with me and uh, just go over things with me, help me with uh, help me with problem solving. And if she couldn't help me, she'd steer me in the right direction to go someplace else. So she used all her resources to help me out, and that's just one. That's just one story of one teacher. Oh yeah. So I'd say just in the experience of of what do I take with me? Like when people believe in you, um, I would say like. Just know they believe in you for a reason. They they see something inside of you that maybe you might not necessarily see. When I when I was in high school, I used to hate school. Just drag my lip across the floor whenever <sighs> I crack open a book. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I took I think I took the SAT like seven times. I'm like, I'm like no, I, I got you. Up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I no, don't. I'm saying, but I'm saying like teachers that I had, um, Coach Kohler included. All those people really kept kept the faith, believed in me, made oh, yeah. sure I got the grades that I needed to. Through hard work, nothing, nothing short of that. Oh so yeah, no shortcut. I, I I really appreciated that part of those people, and just like I said, when people believe in you, you got to just believe in yourself just that much more. You got to see that they're seeing something that you might not necessarily see, but you know they. I mean, it's a lot of people spoken into existence for myself to go to UW and have a career and graduate. Miss Poppins used to never. She used to always ask me about <laughs> whenever I used to drop by on my times off. I come by she never asked me about football she always asked me about my grades yeah so, oh yeah that's what i mean like it, it's, it's just different it's, it's, it's a different type of love yeah i had her in uh i think um my uh, junior retreat and that was that was mm-hmm. experience i'll remember uh right. and that definitely goes back to what you said earlier about you know the teachers like i would say that they do care you know what i mean it's not like mm-hmm. they're just there to get paid you know what i mean uh, do you have some best memories? I mean, I know it's a lot because at least when I think about it, there's so much to think about. Do you have some that stick out about a day? Because <laughs> I know that that's something that you could like probably go on for a while. Because I know yeah. everybody's well, like, you know, how can you just pinpoint a couple? Oh, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> some good, some good memories from our day. Man, there's too many, too many. See, yeah, it's like, definitely encounter, hard. Encounter, encounter, just getting those letters or getting, I actually kind of say that, uh, getting, just oh, learning about well, yeah, the people yeah. that cared about me and uh, just having that type of love, um, a day putting that on, um, just kind of as an older person, as a, being older in high school, I did my senior year, my last opportunity. And it was a great experience for me to go into college, kind of being on my own and having mm-hmm. just that knowledge to just that people really were in my corner. Oh, yeah. Like, so, yeah. This, this one's not as uh, serious. Did you have a favorite place to eat around O'Day? Did you? Because I know there's definitely places. I mean, it's changed a little uh-huh. bit from. Yeah, uh, I'll probably go Blue Water Taco. I still yeah. Go that, oh, yeah. That's a classic. I still pull up over oh, yeah. here sometimes. Uh, uh, Yoshino is obviously those number oh, yeah. two right oh, yeah. here. <laughs> oh god, yeah, making me think about it again. Um, do you think that you've changed since your time there? I mean, obviously, you know, I could say I've changed since last year, but do you think you've seen like a big jump in like personality changed. or? Um, changed. I would say I mean, obviously, changed with time, but I would say I grew. I yeah. Changed. Oh, yeah. For I'm sure. Still the same. I'm still the same guy at heart. I'm still the same <laughs> little kid at heart. You know. What I'm oh saying? yeah. I, I take care of the responsibilities that I have to, and uh, definitely grow up. I mean, as you go through life, you realize that you have people, certain people that are always there for you, and then you see people that kind of fade away. And that I, I mean, people could say that somebody changed because of that, but someone. You grow up, I would yeah. say. Oh, yeah. Change. You grow and you learn from your mistakes and you critique yourself or you ask other people for advice. But I think I've, I've always been myself at the end of the day. So. Oh, yeah. No, because, I mean, 
Yeah, no, I get that for sure. I feel like, especially like, I mean, in your case, and I'm sure you got a lot going on, but I feel like it's important to also at the same time be able to go and have things like that you enjoy, you know, whether it's like, you know, joking around or right. stuff that, you know, that's able to keep you, you know, because I mean, sometimes I'm sure it gets stressful for you. Uh, Absolutely. It's, 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 it's life. It's, it oh, yeah. stresses everybody. So it's just what journey you take. Do you have uh, a favorite Coach Kohler moment? Uh, cause I, I'm guys, guys, are walking legend. I've known, I've been able to have the pleasure. I played, uh, I played s- baseball with, uh, John. So I've known him for a while. Uh, do okay. you have a favorite coach Kohler moment? A favorite coach Kohler moment? <laughs> I got a few. <laughs> I've, I've said a few of them before. Let me think of something new. Um, <laughs> I'll probably go actually probably go to what I always said. I remember I scored in a in a playoff game and for some reason I was mad. I don't know, you might have been mad. Somebody <laughs> made me mad. Somebody might have made me mad on the team. I don't know, probably Mike. Mike does, but <laughs> and I threw the ball up, just threw it up super high. Um, got a flag and uh he was hot. He was tearing in the <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but as soon as oh, I yeah. walked up to him. He gave me a big hug and he was like, "Good run," <laughs> and wow. that's just kind of the huh. kind of the <laughs> simplicity and love and kind of complicatedness of Coach Kohler. Oh yeah, at the same time, oh, yeah. it's all in the same. I so, definitely yeah. agree with that. <laughs> he's uh, he's great. I love seeing him. Around. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, what made you want to come? go and participate in track was that just some that you you wanted to you know get extra running in or what was the story behind that because i've known that you did track but i was never really sure about you know the backstory to that uh no i'm, I'm a track i'm a track guy I, yeah i mean like i play i ran track before i played football oh, okay uh, so my pops got me into we, we was track my brother myself a lot of people in my family went track on my dad's side so Back in the day, it used to be the argument who was faster and all that type of stuff. So I was the track guy first. I guess I got too little bit too bulky. To continue, so. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Okay, because yeah. I know I know you accomplished a lot in that field. Um, I think Metro Metro League titles. Uh, so I was definitely curious about that. This yeah, next one. A little bit general. Oh, no, I want to stay too. Don't do that. <laughs> I want to stay in the honey. My senior year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Yeah, yeah. Hello, you got that one in there. My bad, my bad. Sorry, what was that? You uh, uh, cut out a little bit. No, people. Oh, no, people. You know what I'm saying? I got to keep my rep. Got to keep it? Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. This one's uh, a little bit more general. Uh, you know, seeing success across the board in different sports for a day, you know, in recent years, uh, at least, uh, from Dustin Camacho winning back-to-back state titles in West wrestling and the football team's success in years, you know, right. spanning from even, you know, before you and uh, the state titles, right. the the basketball team last year and even this year, you know what I mean? I mean, for years right. before that, as well as the baseball team recent state last year. What does that say to you? You know about O'Day and the staff and the coaches. Like, I, mean, I guess I'm trying to get at you <laughs> know because that's that to me. We on the right train. Oh yeah, I mean because you you, know you and I. Um, I mean I didn't play as much as you did. I was on the team for a couple years. You know, uh, yeah. but like, what does that say to you about you know the commitment the coaches have and the staff and just the people there? I think I think it says a lot about the coaches. Um, yeah, and I like think the it says culture a ton about the coaches. Absolutely, but. I think that also a testament to the brotherhood. I think guys, whenever I go around all day, I get I get love. I think I think that has the sense of like you see guys do something before you, and they'll go try go out there and try and do it better than you. Oh yeah, and that's why I always loved all day. It's not trying to mimic nobody. I've always I've always that's what I've always thought. When I was a freshman, and I saw the seniors, uh, Jay Sean Jordan, yeah, my brother yeah. Uh, Tatum Taylor, JoJo Brooks. I was like, no, nah, I'm trying to be better than you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I think that's the O'Day pride of, oh, yep, you're going to hear all these stories about this, that, and the third. third Taylor Mays, uh, Jory, myself. And you got guys like, yep, I'm going to be the next one of that. I'm going to be in a class oh. of my own. 
So I think that's I think that's a a big thing. And I think the coaches kind of push that on those guys. They tell them like, "Oh, he used to do this." Oh yeah. Somebody might be like, "All right, yep, I'm trying to do that times <laughs> too." So that's why that's what I think about it. I think those young young dudes, young men, figuring it out. I, 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 I'm I'm glad to say I'm from O'Day. I, I graduated from O'Day. I spent all four years at O'Day because of that. Like we got young guys really trying to to really trying to break records and all that and trying to just do their best, try to be the best oh, yeah. in whatever they're doing. And that's all aspects, football, basketball, track, school, all that. So, Because, I mean, at least when, you know, I was there and even now, you know, you look and I don't know if there's like a weakness because you know, baseball is going out and, you know, they're doing well and basketball and, you know, wrestling with Camacho winning back-to-back state titles. I think he won yeah. the only state title that Ode's ever won last year. And then to do it again, you know, that's huge. Right, exactly. Um, that's, that's, that's just a testament to it, really. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely different, I think, from other cultures that, you know, it's, I, I say culture even though it's high school, but I feel like there is a culture, you know, to be able to go out there and want that success yeah. year after year. Absolutely. To try and, for you to win two state wrestling titles, I never wrestled, but <laughs> my brother wrestled. And yeah. I, I used to watch it closely because I, I always found an interest in it. Mm-hmm. But uh, for him to be able to do that, I I ain't seen nobody do that. My brother didn't do that. A lot of people I watched him do that. So that's 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 what I mean. A guy like that, I mean, whatever he's doing, I, I think he'll be really good at it. If it's wrestling, if it's whatever, somebody that's got heart like that, that's that's that, that's that old day. Oh yeah, because Dustin was coming off. Uh, I think he, he tore his ACL earlier in, uh, last year, and to come back from that, you know, and win state again. Yeah. See? Takes that. Now I'm going to move on to UW. Um, obviously, coming out, I think what I read is you played you played linebacker too, uh, for a point of time in high school. At, in high school, yeah. Uh, and to no, come I'll out, play safety. Ah, oh, safety one. This is wrong, man. Man, can't trust nothing. Uh, what was <laughs> what was the recruiting process like for you? Was there was it like a hard decision, you know, to go to UW, or were you like you kind of knew, or what? What was that like? Um, to be honest, it was an easy decision because my mom made it for me. Yeah, <laughs> and, I <love> <laughs> and I love her for it. <laughs> Don't oh yeah, mistaken. But my mom, I had gotten an offer, so I had gotten an offer from Sark before Pete had came in. Yeah. And my mom was like, you're going to Washington, you're going to Washington, you're going to Washington. I was like, Mom, I don't want to go. Like, I'm trying to go to, like, Arizona State or something like that. Okay. Like, I'm trying to go have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was 17, or I was 16, actually. I was a junior in high school, and I was, it was football season, so I might have been, yeah, I was, like, 16. Yeah. And then Pete had gotten hired uh, soon after. I don't know when he got hired. Uh... He got hired at the end of my junior season, I believe. Okay. And then I think he had been hired for maybe a month. And my mom was had it up to here with me and me just kind of waiting around because I got <laughs> a few other offers. But we went up to Pete's office after I uh, called. Can you hear me? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you now. Okay. For, it kept cutting out. I was like, oh, shoot. What do I do? All right. You got me? Yeah. I got you now. Okay. What you, what you, what you get cut off at? Um, uh, when Coach Pete was uh coming in, uh, that's kind of when you were talking about uh, like I think you said when uh, when he got hired, and then okay. Like, yeah. Okay, when Coach Pete got hired, I got you. So Coach Pete got hired. It was the end of my junior season, mm-hmm. and I think I committed. Or it was the beginning of my. It was like I don't know, but I had gotten the offer, and I committed like a couple months after. Okay. Um, yeah. I <laughs> met with him. I met with him with my mom and my dad. And they had already told me, like, I was going to commit regardless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had, like, this big, long meeting and talk. And I'm sitting there listening to it. And I'm like, he don't even know. Like, it don't even matter what he's saying. <laughs> come here. So, but it was great. Like, don't even mistake. Everything he had to say is what you want to hear. And that's why I got uh, – Coach B is – I would I, – I go to fight for that man any day of the week. Oh, yeah. Um, so don't get mistaken, but – uh, but at yeah, first, you I, didn't really know about it. You were, like, on the edge. No, I had no idea what I was signing up for. Yeah. That kind of... <laughs> I'm glad I did, though. <laughs> that kind of spills into the next one. I was just going to ask, what was it like having him as a coach uh, and the impact that he had on you off the field or on the field? 
Um, Coach P. Coach P is. Um, how can I say this? Coach P is one of the most fair people I've ever met in my life. Huh. Um, he was he was fair to me on the field. Um, he he let me play my freshman year, mm-hmm. and he put trust in me, and he put trust in Jake as well. And oh yeah, we played. At times, my freshman year, people forget to talk about that freshman year. We were we had awful days. <laughs> we had awful days. Just a lot of young guys on the field at once. And then, but then again, we always showed promise, and we always did what we needed to do, and we always worked hard. And Pete always respected that, I would say, and always believed in us because of that. And um, off the field, I mean, he, he held me to a standard of going to class and getting great grades, oh, yeah. at least trying my absolute best to get the best grade I could possibly get. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he got that out of all of us. He got that out of myself. And like I said, in high school, I hated school. And I hated <laughs> school even more in college. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I got my degree. I graduated from a great school, my hometown school. So it was, uh, uh, like I said, a lot of love to Pete, a lot of love to my family, a lot of love to everybody that helped me get that. But Pete was a huge, pivotal thing in that. What was it like uh, playing in the Apple Cup for those four years? And what does that rivalry mean really mean to you? Because, I mean, obviously be, <laughs> being a fan is a whole different thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> it don't really mean nothing to me because we ain't ever losing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, it was, I mean, it was always fun. We was always beating them up. I can't even <laughs> like, my freshman year, we beat the hell out of them. My sophomore year, we beat the hell out of them. Like, like, I, like I can't even, like, it was fun. It was a ton of fun each time because it would be packed. If we were at home, it would be packed. Oh, yeah. And then if we were there, one thing that was fun when we played there, I love playing at Wazoo. Yeah. Because it's, it's fun because you see, you can see their, because their stadium isn't that big. And that's no shade of that. Because you don't really want a big stadium. And I can tell like that. You want it to be small and packed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's how they did it. So, like, it's super loud in there. <laughs> so, where you're on the field, you can see people clearly. So, I can <laughs> see people, like, I, I know that know me. And they just oh. say the craziest things. And they, you like, like, you know I know you. Like, I went to, like, <laughs> we've been at the same parties. Like, we know the same girls. Like, we grew like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I know oh, yeah. you. Like, when we go back home, whenever you come back to Seattle, you have to come see me. Like, like I'm going to remember that. God. And, we, and that's why, like, in the snow, I remember seeing, yeah. like, at least 10 people in warm-up talking crazy. And I was like, yep, this is how it's about to go down. Like, <laughs> like the Wazoo players had nothing to do with it. It was, it was mostly the fans. They oh, yeah. That. They gave them that game. They gave us that game before it even started. <laughs> God, I love that. So, that's great. Because yeah. I remember the snow game and all that, but that that definitely brings another element to it to be able to like you know know these people and be like yeah, I <laughs> just extra fuel to the fire. Jesus, I love that. Um, this this uh might not be the you know the best game. What was uh what was your experience playing Alabama in your sophomore year in the the college football playoff? What what was that like? Because I know that's a whole that's a whole different thing. Now, yeah, hello? Now, now I can hear you. It just cut off dead silence. Did you hear that? No, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's Florida. Hello. They got patchy patchy hello? service out there. I got you now. Hold on, it's Florida. All right, can you hear me now? Now I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. What I was saying was that uh, Alabama's – the difference in Alabama was that everybody on their team was pretty damn good. Like, nobody – like, when you play other teams, yeah, there's, a there's like, a second-tier amount of guys. And not a second-tier, but, like, you got your super good guys and you got your kind of role players or yeah. whatever you want to call them. Oh, yeah. And Alabama had – everybody was, like, a second round, first round, third <laughs> round. Like, everybody was going to the NFL. Like, every single person. Oh, yeah. So, that was the difference. But I wouldn't say that. I don't know. Everybody wants to make them sound unworldly, but they, I mean. It but was it, it was like, it was, it was different than, you know. Not so much. I mean, like, I mean, like, I'm being honest, I wouldn't say something at all, but it's, it's regular football. No, I got you. I got you. Better dudes. Yeah. I just thought I would ask just because that was, you know, 
going to the college football playoff. You know, that's definitely something. Yeah, no, that was, everybody love that question. Everybody. <laughs> Uh, do you have a favorite moment or game in your time at UW? <laughs> uh, oh. I would say some of I would say. Oh, we got it. Okay, you're good. Oh. Maybe not. First game. Didn't play. Didn't play. No idea where to go. Nothing to do. Got smacked in the backfield for like four yard loss. That was the last time I played. That was probably my favorite play in college football. Uh, uh, like, it was like my third play I ever played. Oh, was that uh pardon me if I'm wrong. I got I you got you cut out there for it. Was that uh was that Boise State? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's, Smurf that's Turf. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was it kind of like an awakening? Like, ah, damn, you know. It was just like it was. It was Pete's first game at back in Boise. It was crazy loud. It was the first college football game, and I just had like a brain fart. Like I just got to play, and, <laughs> and like I just forgot it. Just it was a simple play too. It was one. It's like one of the basic plays. Yeah. Just brain fart, and I got lit up in the backfield. <laughs> I was like, "Yep, that is the last time I'm gonna let that happen." <laughs> I will ask before I let that happen. <laughs> yeah, so I got you. Um, what was it? What was uh your experience playing in the Rose Bowl? Oh man, that's a sensitive topic. Oh, if you don't want to answer <laughs> um, that, you don't got to answer nah, that. No, it was great. It was great. Don't get me mistaken. It's, it's, it was it was amazing playing in that and just having you, you take a second. I usually don't. I try my best not to look around or anything like that. Yeah. But it being my last college football game, I took a second before the game really tick, went off. Uh, I think it was right after the coin flip. And I took a second to look around, and it was absolutely it – it, it was the dream that you want. It's, it's you're playing Ohio State. Um, we were good. They were good. Um, they was talking crap from their, from, <laughs> from their fans. There is not a single – you can't see a single seat. It's either red or purple. Yeah. Um, people drinking, people having a ball on the <laughs> side. It, it was, it was, it was prime time football as best you can get to it to the NFL that you could possibly get. I think the Rose Bowl. I think there's a couple ball games that obviously stand in the class of their own, and that's by far the coolest game I've I've, I've played in it so far. So oh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully a lot more cooler ones to come. But I will say that's number one right oh, yeah, now for sure. Um, yeah, because I. My, it was kind of spontaneous. Oh, never mind. I take that back. I take that back. A couple of them apple cups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's nice. I would agree with that. Um, <laughs> uh, at least, at least to go back to the apple cup thing. I, I, I had friends, you know, that were, you know, Wazoo fans, and they would always get so geared up for that. You know, they'd always be like, "Oh, you know, we're gonna whoop y'all." I, I say, I'm like, why are y'all getting so happy for that? <laughs> they would y'all get so are excited. Not Y'all are not gonna win that. I think I think it was the snow game. I remember the best because uh, it was my friend Sean. Because we were at O'Day, Sean Mahoney, uh, and he was like, uh, "I think they had, I think they had Minshew. I think it was." Yep. And they were like, "Uh, because they were number eight, and you guys, uh-huh. we were, we were sixteen, and they were talking yep. all this, and it was like it was in Pullman, and they were finally gonna get one. And then I I was in a, I couldn't watch that game. I had to go watch a movie with those guys, but I kept following the score, and I saw twenty eight to fifteen. I was like, "Yep." It was the same one. Yeah. I didn't expect none less. I didn't expect anything less. Yeah, we had to run it up on them real quick. <laughs> hey, people we'll forget the fact that Savon took – I mean, Savon played like damn near the whole fourth quarter. We ran it oh, up on Oh, yeah. Them yeah, yeah. We, we ran it up on them that day. We had a party in the Palouse. Ain't that what they call it? <laughs> it was a party in the snow. God damn. Oh, God. I love I love hearing about that. Um to go to go back to that Rose Bowl. And we party when we got back home. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I I always get real excited for that game because I mean, I I know people from both sides, you know. So it's always like I I don't I don't ever really get too nervous, but I'm like, you know what, got to take care of business. And then see, seeing right. games like that, I think I think it was in 16. It was like 45 to 10. 
No. 16, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, 45 to 17. That, that was probably like the second best game. I'll say that one <laughs> over there. And then my freshman year, we went crazy on them. <laughs> we went absolutely. Everybody was scoring. Everybody was scoring touchdowns. <laughs> I swear. Oh, oh my God. Um. No, that I I would say to, I would agree with you on the the Rose Bowl being in a whole tier of its own, just because uh, I don't know what spurred it, but my dad was like, "Do you want to go?" And I was like, "It's the Rose Bowl, hell yeah, I want to go." Uh, and I mean, just being there and you threw a pass for a touchdown, if I can remember correctly. Uh, and and yeah, on both sides of the field, I mean, the talent. You know, from them having Haskins and McLaurin and, you know, on our side, stuff like that. It was. They had dudes. Just, they had dudes. We had dudes. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably like, if you probably look back at it, there's probably like 20. I don't know. Maybe not 20. Or but a de- definitely a decent amount. Like 10, 15 dudes that's in the league right now from that game itself. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Which is crazy to say. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that much talent was on the field and not many dudes in the league right now. And it's only two years since then. So oh, yeah. Right. And, and there's more coming. That's yeah. a good – yeah, oh, yeah. And to speak on that, that's a good segue because, I mean, obviously guys from that game that are, you know, going to get drafted this year, uh, you know, with a number of guys that have been invited to the Combine over the years, you being one of them, uh, as well as guys being pro dogs. Just, it's similar to what I asked about O'Day and the culture there and the staff. What does that say – I mean – would you say it's just like pretty similar with UW and the program there that people are committed, you know, to getting better and to like, to, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, uh, coming off of my freshman year, being as bad as we, I mean, we weren't horrible. I, I don't want to act like we were horrible. We went to a ball game, we won our ball game, but we were a little bit above 500. Like we weren't nothing crazy. Yeah. Um, and then from going from that to the playoff, like that, that's a testament. And we did it with the same dudes for the most part. Um, I don't think any really young dudes played. I don't think we had too many true freshmen play on that team. So I think that just shows that how much we grew up and how much we fought. And even a year after that, even though we didn't play in the playoff or nothing like that, you got to take into account we had Dante. Um, break a record for most coverage yeah, yeah. ever. It's like people like you got it. Like yeah, we might not have had the record, but we had guys out there striving to be the best. And sometimes it just don't go as planned. Like it's just football. Oh yeah, it's that's just, just how sports. it goes. I mean, it, it's just life, really. It, that, yeah. Anything else in life, but you really had dudes out there working as hard as they could. We had my senior year, Ben had like the most tackles in college football. Uh, like yeah, you got like, dudes. You had dudes really doing crazy things left and right, and you trying to be the best you. And at times, like myself, I look at myself like, damn, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> you can have like kind of a good year, and then you hear you got John Ross having a uh, crazy year, you got Dante breaking records, you got yeah. Ben break, making the most tackles in the country. So you you want to be able to compete with them, be able to say it's you with them on your level oh, as yeah. running back or receiver or whatever. And I think that's the the dog, the compete that Coach Pete brought to it, and I'm I'm sure Coach Lake is gonna push it over the hump. So, because yeah, I mean, just the guys like throughout your time there with guys like John Ross. Uh, if I remember, uh, Corey Littleton was there. Were you? Yeah, people don't even think about when they when people say pro dogs, people forget that Corey Littleton <laughs> really was a baller at you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> A baller at UW, man. Guys, the Rams and just balling for the Rams too. Guys like Buddha and Byron Murphy, Zeke Turner, Caleb exactly. McGarry, Jordan Miller. I think uh, who am I forget? K- Kevin King, and a bunch Kevin of other guys. King. You know, Taylor Rapp. Got, I know. Taylor, you got a ton of dudes. I know Marcus a was there for like a year. You know, but still, Marcus Peter. Yeah, no, Marcus. Marcus was before me. Yeah. Marcus oh yeah. 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 But I mean, oh yeah, definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh. I've kind of seen it a little bit through social media as well as like on the field, but what's your relationship with uh, with Jake Browning as well as Savon? And you know, obviously, uh, with last year happening and Savon, you know, going over a grand, well, I say a grand, a thousand yards rushing. Uh, uh, have you given him uh, any advice or tips going as he gets ready for like the combine and stuff like that? Well, I mean, obviously that uh, happened already, but like yeah, before that. Um, 
I, I mean, I give him the best advice I can possibly give him. Um, people think, I don't know, people kind of have that, like, because he's younger, people want to say, like, little bro, big bro type thing. That's just my dog. Like, we go yeah. back and forth. Like, we, like I'll be doing dumb stuff. I'll do some dumb stuff, and he'll call me out for it. <laughs> he'll do some dumb stuff, and he'll call, I'll call him out for it. Um, so, that's my guy. And, um, yeah, um, I try and give him everything I can. But as myself, I mean, just going through this last year, I was kind of winging it my damn self. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, now that he's in the position I was, I give him bits and pieces, and whenever he calls, I, I, I'm always checking on him. I should give him a call later on in the day. <laughs> um, and then Jake, that is my guy. Jake, <laughs> Jake is my big bro because he used to take care of me. Like I told you before, yeah, I used to just straight up not know to play. And Jake, I, hey, Jake, what, got? what do I got? What do I do? What do I? Do? Do, do, do. And he know exactly. I swear, Jake had to study exactly what Miles had to do, <laughs> and then the rest of the offense because I'm asking questions. <laughs> Uh, and it's not because I didn't know. It's just like, hey, man, you want me to do this? You want me to do that? You want me to do this? Oh, yeah. I can get open on this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just you clarify. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to, hey, I'm open. I'm open. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, Jake, Jake, Savon. There's a ton of guys I could speak on and just like the brotherhood of you dub. I mean, Buddha. I've known Buddha since I was a child, like a little kid. Um, yeah. You got um, Kevin. That's Big Bro Z and Victor. I mean, one of those guys that you just got love for at all times. Um, and, I mean, I could go down the list. I could sit up here. I could go all day about that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna... All right. I'm going to get into the, the NFL stuff here. Uh, keeping with the combine, was there anything that was like that stuck out to you or was unique uh, or memorable from the combine and that whole draft process? To be honest, uh, no, I, that was probably the most stressful time of my life. I, I would not go back to that point of my life for anything. Um, it's just it's just a lot going on. Um, oh, yeah. And, I mean, it kind of crunches uh, your whole dream into, like, a couple moments in a couple months span. You got to yeah. run the fast 40. You got to have a good pro day, draft day. A mm-hmm. um, couple small moments that you kind of dreamed about and – I mean, at the end of the day, I, I mean, personally, I never dreamed about any of anything else other than playing football. So you kind of forget about the other stuff oh, that goes yeah. into it. So, but I mean, it, it's, it is what it is. It's part of the part of it. So you learn from it. You go through it, and then you just sit back and be like, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so. But yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah, no, because you know, I've, it's it's hard for me at least. I mean, obviously, I'm not in the sport, you know, like being in there each day, each day out. Uh, I feel like it's difficult to judge a player off of just some numbers that are because like, yeah. like when you talk about a 40, you don't run a 40, you know, without pad. I mean, well, you don't run right. in a game without pad. I don't know. I just think that's difficult. And I don't think that's entirely fair, you know, because I mean, whether it's, you know, a guy get like I'll take DK, uh, DK Metcalf. Because people were getting on him about like forty time and stuff, or well, shuttle, three cone and stuff. And then the dude has his season. I, I just mm-hmm. think I just think it's kind of stupid to be go ahead. Oh, this dude's not worth you know the, like a, a high pick just because he he can't run and like around some cones. I don't know. I don't right. Know. Um. No, that's that's exactly what it comes down to. It's it, 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 it's 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 what they can come off of from them numbers and then from some films and then what they come up with and sometimes it's not always right sometimes it is right yeah, I mean, yeah. it's part of the process because uh, oh yeah definitely because I think I think it was Bruce Arians said that you know he doesn't focus too much on like looking at the uh, like the numbers he focuses on the film because I feel like that's a whole different thing uh, yeah like I said that's my piece on it not you know uh, did you do anything unique with your first paycheck? Because there's there's I'm always sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. pardon me. I, I put that. I put my money. I sent my money. I sent my signing bonus home. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I always hear really I, take care of your money. I, yeah, I don't really buy that. And, I got um, you. It's too expensive. Like expensive to. Yeah, having to pay for fun, I'd rather just have regular fun. Like oh yeah, oh, yeah, I agree with that fully. 
Uh, sort of to go back to when you mentioned about Boise State and it was uh, that Boise State game, you're kind of like, I'm not going to do that again. Did you have a standout welcome to the NFL moment that sort of said, you know what, I'm here, you know, whether it's like off the field, someone, you know, something happening or like in a game, it was kind of like, oh, shit, you know, I'm I'm here, you know. Um, I'm trying to think. Um. Probably just being in. Probably it happens in practice for me. Yeah. Um, sometimes I mean, like it's it's different in Miami. It is ridiculously hot, and you realize <laughs> that. Like it, your job is on the line. It don't matter how hot it is. It don't matter what it's gonna be. If it's and, 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 and another thing in Miami, it might come down pouring down rainy like yeah, a, like a storm out of nowhere. So you in practice probably first couple. Hot practices, you come in and weigh yourself after, and I lost like 13 pounds in a practice. And I'm a skinny Jesus. dude, like, I'm not even like, you know what I'm saying? My shoes are wet, my whole body was just like I jumped in a pool, and I'm sitting there like, man, this is this is what you think about, this is what you dream about. And I'm like, yep, this is this is it, and enjoy it. Like, this is the only thing I gotta focus on, and like, this. Give my 13 pounds right back. I don't got to go to school. I don't got to worry about what nobody else is talking about. I don't got to. All I got to do is worry about these meetings. And that's something I reflected back on and smiled. You know, sometimes you get in practice, you're like, man, we got this again. Or, damn, it's high or something like that. And I think that moment hit me where it's like, yep, I'm in the NFL. Like, this is what you worry your whole life. Man, make the best out of it. Like, this is where it really began. Like, oh, yeah. you've been dreaming to get somewhere. Don't, don't stop now. Like, finish the dream. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Definitely stuff, you know, I'm sure you want to, you know, keep doing, keep striving. Can't just, like, be like, oh, I'm here. It's not done. You know what I mean? Definitely. Exactly. Oh, yeah. This one's a little interesting just because uh, he's been around the league. What was uh, – do you have any uh, interesting memories you'd want to share about Ryan Fitzpatrick? <laughs> uh, uh, sure. Probably, like, one of the first games I played. I ain't playing, like, the first eight games. Uh, I was just uh, – I was kind of sat in the sidelines or whatever. First game I got to play, play a lot in, uh, I think it was in New York. And something happened. I got blown up. I got <laughs> blindsided too. Yeah. I got blown up. And he looked and was like, I'm coming back to the huddle, kind of like, kind of in a little daze or whatever you want to call it. Just kind of like, oh man, I got hit hard. <laughs> And I look up at him, and he is laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, I'm like, this is really like, <laughs> you're really laughing at me. Like, <laughs> like, you laughing at me in the huddle, bro. Like, come on, man. Yeah. But, but that's, he, he's a great guy. Um, a lot of fun to have in the huddle. Um, a lot to, he's, a, he's somebody you can learn a lot from mm -hmm. just by sitting there quietly. You don't got to ask for nothing. He'll talk to a young guy. He'll talk to whoever. And uh, he kind of sees it on your face, like, uh, let me, let me, let me pick your brain for a little <laughs> bit. And, and it, it was, he's a smart guy, uh, Harvard grad. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he's good people to have around. What was your? This is I don't even have this written down. Uh, what was what was the locker room like? Because I know that's definitely an interesting team with uh, Coach Brian Flores mm -hmm. and guys like uh, I think it's Jerome Baker and. Xavier Howard and Devonte Parker. Do you have guys that you know you sort of got along with quickly, or is, what? What was your experience like in that locker room? Uh, I think I got along with everybody rather quickly, just because uh, either you either you gonna grow together or you are gonna rip apart as a team. Yeah. In the season that we had, we, we started off really bad. Everybody knows that people talking about us being the worst team in NFL history <laughs> at a time. Yeah, at the time. Right? So yeah, so you so you. You see the guys that were the leaders on the team, um, the guys that you mentioned, um, kind of step up and bring the team together. Thin, and uh, those type of guys kind of set the tempo, set the pace, set the set the culture. And uh, I think we grew up as a team. Um, a lot of people got traded away. A lot of people got cut. And uh, that, those things are hard to see. But I think at the end of the season, we had a very, very – good team that knew mm -hmm. each other sometimes people get rid of people are let go or whatever because it's just not the right culture or it's yeah. just not the right fit oh yeah you know what I'm saying offensive defensively and uh I think we got a lot of the right guys in the same or in where we want them but moving forward uh 
just focusing on just getting better as a team, getting better as an individual. So. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, I, I remember that, obviously. You know, that was a big thing. And then I think – I don't know if – I think it was against Philly uh, or something like that. Things started to turn around, and it's funny. My mom will like hearing this. Um, so long, long story short, I've been going every Sunday to uh, the Buffalo Wild Wings downtown with my family because we watch all the NFL games. But my mom would always ask to get the Dolphins put on because she knew you were on the team. Um so I think she'll be excited to hear that. Um, <laughs> what was uh? Nah, yeah, she'll like that. I'll tell her about that. Um, was traveling different in uh, your first season in the NFL compared to traveling uh, in college uh, with the team? Was there any sort of like things that kind of were I mean, I like unique? I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, you got a nice hotel. <laughs> <laughs> You got nice hotel. Sometimes you got super nice planes. You, everybody can lay down in and all that type of stuff. You see the money. <laughs> you see the money. <laughs> so yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, yeah, yeah. You see the money. You see where the money come from. You see what happened with it. You see where it gets spent a little bit, a little change yeah. here and there. Yeah. But you, you learn the game. You learn it. It's a business, and uh, they take care of they, you. Got to take care of your players somehow, some way. So. Traveling was a little bit different. <laughs> um, God, that's great. Um, obviously, you t- you talked about it a little bit, but what what's it uh what's it been like living in Florida? Is has that been like a big change to you or? Absolutely, it's <laughs> much different from Seattle. They got iguanas over here on the street. They got igua- They got more iguanas <laughs> than squirrels. What? Um, that's weird. Yeah, no, nah, I, I ain't making it up either. They got crazy amount of iguanas. Um, but it, it's, it's cool. Um, I like it down here. I like it a lot. It's hot. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but the people are really nice. Uh, I mean, I hope that I stay down here for a long time. I really, I really do like it down yeah. here. Um, I'm not going to act like I know Florida that well yet, but <laughs> I, I do what I have been shown and seen so far. I do enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, getting the feel for it though. Yeah. Like in the community. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's, it's nice. Uh, were you able to keep the ball from your first touchdown? Uh, yeah, I got it at my crib oh, right perfect. now. Perfect. That's great. Always. I don't know. I'm kind of, uh, I don't know what the word for it is. Sentimental stuff like that. So I yeah. thought that yeah. my mom got really excited when she saw that too. Cause like I said, she keeps the games on and I remember watching those games. Oh, okay. Here's some, what's, uh, what was your relationship like with, uh, I think, I think I, I asked you when I saw you, uh, that game at SPU. I think Pat- Patrick La- Laird. Laird, yep. yeah, 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 that's my guy. Because that that uh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, uh just because that he's a rookie too, so he was good guy to have around. Yeah, um, cow guy. Um, so it was, it was really got really nice having a young guy with me in the room, mm-hmm. especially the way the season went. Yeah, um, a lot of guys in our room left or whatever got hurt. Um, just football things. And uh, having a consistent dude to push and be pushed by um, was very helpful. Because I know that that like like you said with guys moving, and I know that that running back we moved around a little bit, but at least from you know what I've seen from you and I've heard, I mean, it's all been you know it's all been love. You know, guys working for it, uh, so that's oh, always good to hear. Uh, this one this one's a little bit similar to some I asked earlier. Uh, what is it? I mean, obviously, you talked about, you know, getting getting there and, you know, realizing that this is what everything's amounted up to. But what does it mean to you to have gotten here, you know, from all the hard work, all the time spent? You know, obviously, like you said, the draft being stressful, stuff like that. I mean. Um, I mean, I mean, it don't mean much right now. Yeah, because you got to work for it. it. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, it ain't, it ain't too much to put in the bank. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't too much to say, yep, I did that or. I was able to accomplish this. Um, I, obviously, I'm, I'm very appreciative of what I was able to accomplish from day one, little league, high school, and college. But I did not. It's not like I played football for those for those accolades. I played football to play in the yeah. NFL. So. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that's hard. Yeah, because you definitely, you know, it's not some like, oh, you know, you don't want to tout it around. You got work to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Oh yeah. Uh, 
I know, I know we're still in the off season and I don't want to like press you on next season. Uh, but do you have any goals for next season? Do you have anything that you're like, you'd want to accomplish? Um, I got my own goals. I don't be sharing my goals, but <laughs> you're good. You're good. Goals I will, I will share. It's just to, just to grow up as a, as an individual off the field. Um, being a leader to the guys that come in as much as I can, being a second year player, not like I'm a better or nothing, but <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. The day, seeing that they're gonna have the same struggles I just came out of, mm-hmm. um, definitely being able to be something to lean on and uh, just being able to be the best player I can be if that means special teams, if that means whatever that means, um, yeah, uh, playing running back, catching the ball at the backfield, whatever they ask me to do, being able to be versatile enough to do so and uh. Yeah, so that is the plan. Gotcha. Uh, obviously, I've seen a little bit of it uh, through your story and through stuff you've promoted. Uh, can you tell t- talk a little bit about uh, Heart on My Sleeve and sort of that, you know, the brand and sort of how that's all come together? Um, yeah, of course. Um, I would say that's racist, baby. Uh, yeah. Racist baby for sure, but my role in it is um, we've been best of friends since I don't know, like shit, like high school, mm-hmm. and um, he's went through mental health problems, and I see that everybody goes through mental health problems. It's sometimes not super extreme, but everybody goes through hard times, myself included. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm able to gravitate towards that because one, he was one of my best friends, and two, I. Um, I like to help people. I like to put a smile on somebody else's face. I put a smile on mine. And it's something that, I mean, we've all struggled with. So yeah. I was able to pitch in what I could, uh, help with uh, anything that I can. Um, if that's marketing or if that's ideas or if that's just something I talk to with him. Yeah. Uh, about an idea or in the next move, me and him talk almost every day. And, uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, that's racist, baby. Um, I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm just kind of tagged along to help out. So. There for the ride. Yeah, but I, I got I, you. I, it's something I do strongly believe in, though. Yeah. I, I oh yeah. Take away from that. I strongly do believe in the message and just telling people that hey, it's okay to be whatever you are. It's, it's not like it's a promotion of being sad. It's a promotion of being whatever your the state of mind that you're in. Yeah. Sometimes you're super happy and you can wear that. Sometimes you sad or down or you feel like life's against you or whatever whatever you want however you want to explain it um and everybody's been there Ma. um and uh just being able to be somebody to talk to somebody to help lean on somebody to do whatever you need uh, is something that i believe in because uh i've had enough people in my life that have been there for me when i needed them and then i've had people not be there be there for me when I've needed them, and I've yeah. seen both sides of it, and you kind of see, like, hey, like, if somebody can rely on me, I would I would love to be that f- for somebody, you know? Sometimes sometimes people let you down, and you learn the hard way, but as much as you can, you should be able to help, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely, for sure. I uh, I did take the time, and I went and read about <laughs> that, and I, I definitely agree, because like, like you said, there's definitely both sides to it, you know, where, you know, you've had people when you need them, and at the same time, you don't as well as just being able to, you know, be okay with how you are. Cause you know, not all the time, you know, not everything's going to be great all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, so I definitely, I, I read into that uh, when I saw some about it and, you know, I definitely, I agree with how that, uh, you know, what that stands for. Uh, what was it like? And, you know, how did it feel? What did it mean to you to host your own football camp? It was like a dream come true. Um, doing it in the stadium where I play football as a young dude. Yeah. Um, just hanging out with young dudes in the sense of just just competing, you know, nothing crazy, just having a good time. People always want to, I think, put on the show about it and stuff like that. I, I mean, I, I love that part of it, but I think it was just fun just being able to get out with people, with kids in my community, kids in communities around my community, and just kind of throw the ball around, compete, <laughs> laugh and joke. Yeah. Talk trash to one another. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just have a good time. Be, be young. Be young people. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm still a young thirteen year old at heart. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> really. Uh, but uh, 
you got to grow up from time to time. But when I was out there, I was just like one of them. I was out there yelling, screaming, competing, <laughs> talking trash. I'm talking trash with little kids. I ain't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Going back and forth with little kids, whatever. But <laughs> it's, that, it's the fun part of it. I'm going to do the same thing this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully more kids come out because it's something that just makes you happy. So No, I saw that, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, getting people out and the, all that fun stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I know. Uh, I think. I think it might have been my senior year or my junior year. Uh, you and your brother came in uh, to a day for a uh, an assembly we had, and uh, mm-hmm. kind of spoke uh, a little bit. Um, I know it's probably there's a lot you could say about it. Uh, but what what does your bond with your brother mean to you? Obviously, because uh, I mean, I know he's got his stuff, you've got your stuff. But what what's that like with your brother? Because I mean, I I don't have a brother, I got a sister. But you know, I've been able to see a little yeah. bit of that with you know the brotherhood at O'Day and just stuff like that. Uh, yeah. What is what does that mean to you? Um, what does it mean to me? Um, I do anything for that man. Uh, is that simple? Um. Uh, I think he's pushed me to be where I am more than probably anybody else in my life other than my mother and my father. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of those people that's never never let me down. And if he did, he tried his best to to figure it out for me. Um, he's always one of those people that, that I have to tell sometimes, like, hey, let me figure it out. He, he, he's a big brother to T. He want to... <laughs> When, when I was little, you know, when you're little, you get in a fight, you go get your big brother and your big brother handle your problems. He <laughs> <laughs> was that. And the crazy thing is he's my big little brother now. He's smaller than me, but <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, my brother, we go to war for each other at any time and oh, yeah. for anything. So I think that's that's the bond of, of brotherhood that I have with my big brother. So. Yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, having him in to speak and, you know, seeing what he's done, I definitely wanted to touch on that a little bit. Uh, I kind of touched on this uh, when I talked about Miami. Uh, But, well, yeah, I've already asked. I don't want to repeat myself. Do you, I mean, obviously, you know, you've been around Seattle more, but do you prefer one another at this point? I mean, obviously, you've only been, you know, down there for a little bit, but is Mm -hmm. is Miami, Um, well, not Miami, but like Florida as a whole, would you think about, you know, living there as a whole? Um, probably not forever, but in my young age, yeah, I'm gonna probably be in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I got um, you. But, uh, Seattle's home, Seattle, nothing will ever, nothing will ever take away Seattle. When, oh, I, yeah. um, when I went back to Seattle for the time I was, the two times I've been back to Seattle since, um, man, just getting off the airplane was just refreshing, you know? <laughs> It's just, it's just like that for me. I don't know. I don't know. I love, I love Washington. I love Seattle. Yeah. I love oh yeah. I love every part of it. Um, well, Seattle is the only place where I just get in my car and drive. Like, <laughs> I really just get in the whip and just drive. And it's not like I'm going to look for nothing. I ha- it's not something that I ain't ever seen before. Probably seen the areas I've driven around a billion times. Oh yeah, it's no, just, yeah, yeah. It's just the way I'm feeling. Because uh, at least for me, I had a couple friends who. Like one of them, he just wanted to get out. I had no all like in general. I know people who just wanted to go, you know, East Coast or whatever, didn't want to mm-hmm. be here. But for me, at least, I've always loved it around here, whether it was like Seattle itself or the areas around it. I don't know. I, I, I see myself as being someone who just stays here. I don't know. I've always just thought about it. And like you said, uh, like with driving around, we wouldn't even go anywhere. We would just mm-hmm. go around, you know what I mean? Uh, right. So, yeah, I definitely, there's some... I just wanted to get your uh, thoughts on that because I know it's like a whole different thing. The, the entire, the entirety of the state, you know, uh, those two states, it's a whole different, you know, everything. Um, right. That's all I've got. Uh, do you have any, I mean, I know I'm not, you know, too big. I'm starting off here. Do you have anything you want to plug? I mean. You said what? Do you, you have anything like you want to plug, like whether it's the camp or Homs or. Um, yeah, sure. My brother just came out with a book on Amazon. Um, my brother is uh, retired at 24. Um, um, my brother came out with a book. My camp coming out. My camp coming soon. Um, home Seattle, go get your hoodies. <laughs> I know it's cold up there, so stay warm. 
with a nice hearts everywhere hoodie. Um, and just uh, not even a plug. Just keep on doing. whoever listening, whoever watching, whatever. Just keep on doing you. <laughs> things gonna change. Things gonna things gonna get better always. That all. Uh, I'm not gonna say always a pleasure because this is the first time I've done it. But thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely an honor to get a, a guy. You know. As a as an O'Day kid and as a UW kid, you know to have you know you to go to both and be able to you know watch that and just to interview you now, it's it's like I said, it's an honor. 